Hey guys, I got out of the car, managed to get away from the dog. Uh, I survived the weekend, so you guys get another video today. It's officially October, so I'm going to be going off of my list, finally. Uh, yeah, before that was just sort of a primer that I was doing, because I wanted to get some other stuff out of the way. But today is the first official video of Kyle's scary-ass October Spooktacular. It's not really going to be that spooky, it's just me talking about shit that I remember from when I was a kid. <sighs> anyway, today's video is going to be the Halloween tree. It's uh, kind of an obscure little number from uh, 1993. But uh, it's, it's strangely educational. I'm going to start with that. Basically, the Halloween tree, it came out in 1993. It was on Cartoon Network. And it's about these kids. It's actually based on a novel by Ray Bradbury loosely based, but he still narrates it, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, it's about these kids who are trying to meet up with their best friend to go trick-or-treating. Like, it's these four kids, they all collectively have the same best friend, and he's the, supposed to be the coolest guy in town. Uh, I'm going to get to him in a minute. I want to get the uh, plot synopsis out of the way. Uh, so they're going to go meet up with him, but he's really sick. Like, he has appendicitis, and he's going to the hospital. And they end up meeting this dude. He's sort of like this demonic, grim reaper-like entity who is trying to collect his soul because there's a good chance that Pipkin won't survive the uh, operation. And so they make a deal with this guy where they can follow him trying to catch Pipkin, and if they manage to catch him, Pipkin gets to survive. That's the basic plot to it. Uh, but I'm going to get into it here now. Uh, it's strangely educational, like to the point that it almost seems shoehorned in how educational it is. Uh, because the main, the main antagonist, I guess you would call him, is this old man. Like I said, he's this Grim Reaper-esque figure. He's this old man named, oh god, Carapace Clavicle Moundshroud. It's a great-ass name, right? And it's a great performance by uh, Leonard Nimoy. And uh, he's just this gruesome old man wearing this cape, but Leonard Nimoy, you know, he's chewing the scenery the whole time. He's eating it up. And uh, so, you know, he decides that, hey, these kids want to help their friends survive, but they don't know shit about Halloween, not for real, so I'm going to make them come with me on this wacky-ass adventure through time and needlessly explain Halloween traditions to them. Like, he takes them to, like, third, like 12th century Scotland, he takes them to Notre Dame and Egypt and Mexico. It's weird. It's needless, and it, it, it's bizarre, it's bizarre how educational it is, because it's like, it's not even just talking about Halloween, it's talking about, like, the purpose of gargoyles, like, the original purpose of gargoyles, because they go to Paris in one segment, and it's in Notre Dame, but, uh, yeah, no, it's weird, because it, it all pertains to, like, one of the weird kid's costumes, like, there's a kid who's a generic monster, and he's, he's the focus of the Notre Dame segment. And he's just, he's just stupid. He's the, you know, he's the neighborhood fat kid. And for whatever reason, there's this whole weird detail where you can hear what the gargoyles are saying when wind blows over their mouths. Or water. One of the two. It's, it's odd as hell. But, uh, I'm gonna get to the kids in a minute. I need to address their friend. It's this little shit named Pipkin. And I... I fucking hate Pipkin. I genuinely hate this character. It's a weird preoccupying hate where sometimes I think about him and he ruins my day. That's how fucking weird it is. He's this gangly ginger kid with a gap in his teeth. And I'm not judging him on his fucking appearance. I'm judging him on how the book and the show describes him. Because it's like, apparently on the day he was born, all the pop bottles in the world fizzed over at once. And there's this weird shit where it's like, no kid can run faster, hit a ball harder, 
uh, yell louder or eat more popcorn than Pipkin. He's the greatest kid on earth. They actually fucking say that. He's the greatest kid on earth. And he's just this shit stain, little gangly kid. And for whatever reason, all four of these kids, they just think he's the shit. You know, Pipkin's just the freaking best ever. To the point that, like, oh, God, I'll, I'll get to that part in a minute. Uh, I just needed to talk about that piece of shit for a second. I really hate that description of him. Because he ain't that cool. Pipkin ain't that fucking cool. Okay? If you watch it, he's he's garbage. He's not cool at all. He's really not. And he's right front and center in the middle of the DVD, but I don't look at him as the main character. But, uh... Anyway, uh, the kids themselves. There's, there's four of them. Uh, their names are escaping me at the moment, except for Tom Skelton. Uh, he's a skeleton, because... <laughs> clever... Uh, but yeah, there's Tom, there's the fat kid dressed like a monster, there's a little shitty kid with glasses that's a mummy, and then there's a dumb girl who's a witch. Her costume's actually kind of neat because she has a broom taped to her bicycle, and it looks alright. But, uh, so, Mound Shroud. It's like, hey, you guys need to be able to keep up with me while I'm chasing Pipkin down, because we have an appointment, he's all really fucking vague about it, it's... He's supposed to be dragging him to hell, I guess. But, uh, if you guys can keep up with me before dawn, and we can catch him, then he gets his soul back, no problem. And, for whatever reason, like, Pipkin's, like, in the clouds, and it's really weird, and he's just going through wormholes in the, in the sky. And Mount Shroud goes to this old barn, and he rips all these posters off and makes it into a kite. And he's, like, he's using it as a tail, because he's flying, and that's just something for the kids to hold on to. It's a pretty neat image, it just doesn't make much sense at all. You know, it's one of those things. But, uh, so the first stop is, like, 1300 Scotland. And that's where they learn about, like, pagan rituals and shit like that. That's where we meet this, uh, you, you know, we get to know this girl whose name is escaping me, and she's total wallpaper. They really don't do much with her character at all. But, uh, I guess her whole thing is, uh, she doesn't want Pipkin to die because he was always super nice to her and, like, helped her out with shit. And, no, it's weird. They all have, like, a personal conversation with Pipkin's ghost at random points. And it's always like, hey, you, you're the only one that ever made fun of me. And it's like, hey, come on, you know, gotta worry about people making fun of you. And it's just like, why is everyone so shitty to these kids? I mean, I get why. They hang out with a dude that's named Pipkin. But still, you know, just, kids are, kids are shitty. But uh, then we go to Egypt. We get to know the mummy kid a little bit. And uh, there's this really obnoxious sequence where we see a sarcophagus for Pipkin. And it's got like a baseball glove on it. It, it looks really stupid. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, the mummy kid's like, Oh, Pipkin, you can't die. You're the only one that never made fun of my glasses. And all these kids got really shitty self-esteem in the Halloween tree. And I don't understand it. I really don't. Because, you know, they seem like a pretty functional group, except they're all super fucking dependent on this one Pipkin kid. And they, they need to learn some fucking self-respect. That's what I'm getting from the Halloween tree is kids need to learn a little more self-respect. Anyway, so Fat Monster Kid, he gets, uh, he gets Nostradam. Nostradam? Not Nostradamus, Nostradam. And, uh, you know, the stupid Egyptian kid, he gets to learn about, like, the festivals for the dead and, like, the afterlife in Egypt and shit like that. And then we get to Tom Skelton, the shitty-ass skeleton, who... He's super guilt-ridden about this whole thing because I guess he had this idea in his head where he wished something would happen to Pipkin so he could be in charge for once. I think that's really funny, in all honesty, because the fucking kid is on death's door. And that's his thought. He thought about that once before. It's like, man, I wish something would happen to Pipkin so I could be in charge. Well... You got your fucking wish, Tom, because Pipkin's at death's fucking door. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
I'm actually in a way better mood today because I survived the weekend. I wasn't expecting to, honestly. It was, uh, it was rough. But, uh, so, you know, they learn about Day of the Dead this way, and, you know, they manage to corner Pipkin, and they, you know, Mount Shroud catches him in this stupid-ass jack-o'-lantern that looks like Pipkin's shitty face. That's where they find him. And, uh, it's super dumb. Like, it's super dumb that they're all down to do this. And it ruins the whole thing for me, in all honesty. Like, I kind of like the special, but it kind of ruins it for me. Because the kids are all like, hey, I'm willing to give up a year of my life to save Pipkin's life. So, like, they just, they give up a year of their lives. They're going to die a year earlier than they're supposed to. So this little piece of shit can live. And I always just think to myself, like, what if he ODs when he's like 17 or something, and that was for nothing? You know, what if, what if he's Hitler? What if he's ugly ginger Hitler, and that just goes too far south for them? Anyway, uh, but yeah, so Pipkin, he survives it. He thinks it was all a dream that he had while he was under anesthesia. And we only really see the Halloween tree itself once, but it looks pretty fucking cool. It's all gnarly and twisted. It has thousands of jack-o'-lanterns hanging from it. And, uh, like, the last time we see Mound Shroud, it's this tree and the tor this tornado opens up and, like, sucks all the jack-o'-lanterns up. And Mound Shroud turns into one himself and shoots up into it. And the only one that doesn't get taken is the one that looked like Pipkin, and that is just sitting comfortably on the kid's porch. It's, an, it's a pretty cozy little ending. You know, all the kids run home. Like any Halloween special. Most of the kids end up running home. But, uh, yeah, like I said, Ray Bradbury actually narrates it. There was a novel that he wrote that's the basis for it, also called The Halloween Tree. And I believe he actually reads directly from it when he's doing the narration, which I think was actually a really cool touch. Uh, and he's got a very... He had a very smooth voice, and it translates really well onto the screen. And, uh... Yeah, honestly, that's my takeaway from it. The story itself is pretty fucking dumb, but the voice acting is kind of stellar. I dig it. Uh... I haven't been able to track it down online, but I ha I found it on DVD for really cheap. You can get it on Amazon for like three bucks. So if you're interested in tracking down the Halloween tree and you haven't seen it before, I do recommend it. It's just one of those things that you... It's, it, it's something that you have to watch once, you know? It's one of those things where go ahead, watch it once, put it away forever. But, uh... Yeah, that's the Halloween tree. Uh, tomorrow, that'll be October 4th, if I got my dates right, I'm going to be talking about Billy and Mandy's jacked-up Halloween special, so keep an eye out for that. Alright.